first matchup, but Inter would make their opening statement in the opening minutes. And someone making a very true statement here. They do go hand in hand, <laughs> I believe. Even in Italy. Mm -hmm. And as mentioned, second minute, Inter's Walter Samuel has the flying header, and they're up 1-0 at the start. Keeper one, Pablo Carrizo, is left grounded there. Hernan Crespo subbed on later in the half for Julio Cruz, who goes off due to injury, and Crespo gets a shot on an almost empty net, but he is wide. Lazio had a nice attempt from 30 yards back, but also that one's wide of goal. Just before the break, Inter adds a second, but actually, they didn't. Lazio defender Movido Diakite does. He tries to clear Maison's cross, but has a nice shot on goal instead to make it 2-0 Inter. 55th, Esteban Cambiasso sends in the free kick. It goes in off Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Number eight for him to make it 3-0 visitors. And you can't actually see it there, but he is offside. And Jose Mourinho, that was a close <laughs> one. Lazio had a few good shots in the second half, but to no avail as keeper Julio Cesar was blocking absolutely everything. Alexander Kolarov unable to score off the free kick, and they would not be able to add a single goal. Inter take the win, 3-0. Mourinho says oh so much, and he doesn't have to use any <laughs> words at all. Rude. Last place, Kievo taking on Roma. You kind of have a feel where this game was going to go with Roma's form as of late. They're on the attack to start with, but Stefano Sorrentino turns them away. Poison Red will keep right on coming. The long diagonal pass for Jeremy Menet. He will fake and then lay a beautiful pass up for Matteo Brighi. Pulling it on this Saturday. Roma is... Alessandro Del Piero on Sunday, adding to their injury list. Replaced by 21-year-old Sebastian Giovinco. And he says, in the 57th, guys, I got this. Giovinco rips up in from the free kick. Juve with a 1-0 lead there. Exciting moment for him, his first goal for the club. And uh, he's got some pretty superior placement here. Seven minutes from time, Lecce equalized with a fantastic left footer from Daniello Caccia. Off the post and in. Celebratory lap around the track is in order. Pass from Guillermo Giacomazzi, and then Katia is there to finish it off. Look to end drawn, if not for an explosive finish by the visitors in the final minutes. Dramatic header by Amari. The Brazilian almost gives himself whiplash for the effort. 2-1 the final, and Juventus steal three points in their chase for Inter. This week, last year's Ballon d'Or winner, Kaká, says he earned next January, the summer after that. Ronaldinho, though, out for this game with a muscle problem, so Kaká playing Behind Pato and Andre Shevchenko, it's Paolo Maldini denied by Urbano Pizzari. That in the 13th, a minute later, Giuseppe Mascara chooses the long drive. Doesn't want to run too far, so he's going to hammer this one himself. Off the post and inches away, and then it's blown down for offside, so no follow-up there. 14th minute, Kaká gets to do some attacking. He will fire, and this ball just kicks off the post and away. He's got some hugs for Pizzari, who got a piece of that one. 64th, Pato for the free kick. And Bizarre earns another hug. Oh, what a fantastic save that was to keep this game scoreless. No one hugging him there, though. Ensuing corner, Kaká working for the header. Appeared to be touched on the way in. The Brazilian gets the goal and the big sense of relief that goes with it. 1-0 Milan. Some reports say Shevchenko got the goal. AC Milan is saying Kaká. So we are saying Kaká. Either way, 1-0 Milan. Mascara, 74th. In some space. The lunging header. Abiati with the save. And Milan winning it 1-0. Gennaro Gattuso got a late yellow in this match, so he is suspended for next week's game with Juventus. Well, just one point in the last three games. Napoli sure needed a win to get back on the straight and narrow. Siena would be the team to help them do just that. 15th minute, Napoli on the attack. Christian Maggio from Daniela Manini. It's off the woodwork. And when you slow it down, it actually goes off defender Cristiano Del Grosso first. Santa responds five minutes later. Perfect timing on the pass from Massimo Macarone. But Hussein Carza has keeper Nicolas Navarro to uh, contend with there. Still scoreless into the break. Eleven minutes after restart. Excitement in the Siena end when Marek Hamchik heads it back for Marcelo Zalayeta. But the scrambling keeper gets in the way. Hurtidu. 
doing well in goal so far. Luck would change soon after, though. Visiting defense caught back, and Herman Denis finds Hamshik on the right, and he's got the one banger. Napoli with the 1 0 lead in the 62nd. They're fired up now. Home team adds another 10 minutes later. And Denis gets the cross from Maggio. 2 0 Napoli. That's Denis' first goal since his hat trick against Regina in October. It's a wide open goal there, and the defense is lacking in drive at this point. Siena would not muster up a single goal, and with a 2 0 win, Napoli back in the saddle again. Torino, Fiorentina manages. Gianni DiBiase's head being called for by fans. This game will certainly help in those calls. Bad spot for a free kick if you're Torino, as Adrian Mutu just slams it home. Third minute of play, it's already 1-0 to Fiorentina, as Mutu just gets it around the outside man in that wall. 43rd, Alberto Gilardino will stretch that lead. He's on the other end of Felipe Melo's header. 2-0, Roberto Scaloni playing Gilardino onside. He's the guy in the left-hand side right there. Paolo Zanetti then takes a whack at Gianluca Comoto. That does not go over well. Some pushing and some shoving and some friend-making all over the place. Zanetti ending up with a yellow card. No one sent off as the ref has things under control. Mutu to the byline. Works back for Zdravko Zdrav Kuzmanovic. A lot of footwork and a good goal. 3-0 to Fiorentina. 77, Felipe Melo clods into Nicola Amoruso. That'll be a penalty for the home side. Alessandro Rosina takes the penalty, cuts the lead to 3-1. to one. 84th now, Manuel Pasquale takes it, squirts it across for Gilardino's second, his 11th of the season. 4-1, Fiorentina wins it, their biggest away win in the last five seasons. Santoria and Genoa in the 98th, Darby della Lanterna, or the Genoa Darby. Sampdoria floundering in the bottom half of the standings, and Genoa, who up until last week had a perfect home record. After an uneventful first half, the second picks up with a goal. Diego Melito, his sailing header over Luca Castellazzi. He doesn't get a chance. There's a reason this guy leads the league in goals. His 12 makes it 1-0 Genoa in the 50th. Sampdoria had the equalizer five minutes, a uh, few minutes later. Uh, Hugo Campagnaro, but cheers were soon halted because it's offside. And sure enough, both Campanero and General Del Vecchio are in close range. Eight minutes in the game, post with a free kick, and there is the equalizer they've been waiting for. Or so they thought. Flag goes up again. Bruno Fornaroli gets the offside call this time. And it is close, but it uh, looks like he's in line with the defender there. Tempers erupt, and at the final whistle, 11 is the total number of yellow cards handed out during a rough Genoa Derby. Visiting side take full honors in this one, 1-0. One Not as rough between Atalanta and Udinese. The Atalanta fans have a different idea of who should have won the Best Footballer in Europe award. Mm -hmm. Doni finishing just 46 points back in Ronaldo in the voting. 28th minute, Sergio Flocari holds the ball up for Jaime Valdez. That ball off the post and in. 1-0 Atalanta on Valdez's second of the season. The team's leading scorer, Flocari, sharing the wealth. 78th minute, ball to the back post for Cristiano Doni. Didn't win the golden ball, but he gets that one. Golden. 2-0 Atalanta. Flocari really working the defender, delivers a nice ball for the second goal of the match. No such luck for Udinese, though. Their cross to the corner of the six, headed and then deflected over top. Fabio Cagliarella can't make it happen. And then Atalanta would put up a third one before this was over. Great pass into Christian Vieri, who controls and scores. 3-0 Atalanta to Barrio Guarente with a fine pass as Udinese loses a fifth straight. Well, the standings after 15, it's the faces for the managers as they get ready for the battle of the underdogs in front of just 10,000 fans. Visiting side in white had a chance in the 17th. Miguel Britos is header off the corner. Regina finally broke it open with five minutes left in the half. Quick pass from Franco Brienza and Bernardo Corradi fires in the low ball. One nil for the men in the maroon shirts. Regina's leading scorer there, Corradi, at the seventh. Bologna tied up eight minutes after the break. Christian Zanoni lobs it to Francesco Valiani, and his volley is good. Midfielder hasn't scored since the season opener, and this one didn't stand a chance by Campagnolo in goal. Then Regina takes a surprise lead three minutes later. Off a corner, Edgar Barreto, 30 yards out, his 
shot whizzes past everybody. 2-1 the hosts. And uh, I think I can see a little bit of a trail of smoke behind that one. Temporary lead, though, because five minutes after that, Bologna bullied their way back. Marco De Vallo almost takes off the head of Campagnolo. 2-2 two, two the score, and after that quick succession of goals, this one would end 2-all. Both sides remain in the drop zone. I would not want to see one of those coming at my melon. No. The Pez dispenser goals, I thought. Cagliari <laughs> and Palermo also from the bottom half of the Serie A table. Cagliari with the first shot, third minute. Andrea Postu with the shot, but it rolls right up on Marco Emilia. Not too much stress as we ease into the game. 34th minute, Kosu. On the near side, feeds in front for Michele Fini. And that one is going to work. 1-0 to Cagliari. Offside, a real possibility on this one. No call, though. Second half, more from Cagliari. Again, it's Kosu. Ro Robert Nero asks La Fresca with the header, but Emilia with little problem. Palermo now into the middle. And a nice chip will free up Fabio Simplicio, who is going to Gerard this one. Oh, no. Simplicio then looking for somewhere to hide. Can't find anybody, so time to go back. Palermo again into the middle for Fabrizio Micoli. Federico Marchetti with a fine save to keep that one out. Marchetti doesn't want them coming back into this one. Then a golden chance for Palermo. Marchetti's out of the block, and it's followed up off the bar and an overstop. Levan Nikolica puts it out of 